saved by the chair. Oh, well, there's a Are your kids inside more often in the winter? Do they drive you a little bit nuts? I wanna share with you my six favorite indoor activities that our family loves, that are screen free and mostly inexpensive for families on a budget. Hey friends, welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. If we haven't met yet, I'm Ashley, nice to meet you. I like to talk about Charlotte Mason inspired homeschool as well as help families find things that are on budget and inexpensive. Affordable homeschool, of course, isn't that what everybody's looking for? Well, if that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place, and I'm so glad you're here. I hope you consider subscribing and sticking around for the journey. Today, I'm hosting a collab with many other wonderful YouTube mamas who are sharing about indoor activities for kids. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can check out other ideas to help you and your kids on those blustery days when they can't get outside. Oh. My kids are ages 10, 8, and 5 right now. I have one girl, two boys, and they all can be pretty active at times. And being in our house all the time, especially since we homeschool, they can get a little bit stir crazy. Maybe even have some cabin fever. And just need to get up and move. While I number one try to get the kids outside as often as we can in the winter, as long as the weather allows and as long as we bundle up as best we can, there still are times where we just can't get outside. And number two, we like to keep winters cozy. We do a lot of extra reading um, and we don't mind staying indoors and slowing down a little bit, but there are times where we need to just be active. <laughs> Game number one is old fashioned hide and seek. The only thing is you can spice this game up a little bit. I did this the other day with my kids when their dad left to go do something in the evening and it was after dinner and they're like, what are we doing mom? And I didn't want to turn on the TV before bed. So we turned out all the lights in the upstairs and we played hide and seek in the dark and they had a blast. So I recommend this for kids who can handle that. Uh, my five-year-old did get a little scared a couple times, but I pulled out the glow sticks for him. And every once in a while, he would grab a glow stick and walk around and try to find people. Hide and seek in the dark with glow sticks and your kids will love you. All right, game number two is Snodgeball. Yeah, that's right. I said Snodgeball. Okay, we were gifted some indoor snowballs. If you don't have these, I'll put a link in the description below. They're not too expensive, but even if you don't have those, you can crumple up whatever you have in your house. Newspaper, computer paper if you want, scratch paper, um, tissue paper, anything that you have that you can kind of crumple and throw at people that's not going to hurt them. Um, that's what you can play snodge ball with. So we set this up just in our living area. We had a boundary line and then you just say go and you start chucking the balls at the other people on the other side. You split your family in half. We're a family of five so we made it work and the kids love this and wanted to play it like all day. Eventually mom and dad were getting a bit tired. We had to <laughs> tap out but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, guys. We also spiced it up just a little bit. Oh, Charles. No, it's in a locker. Okay, it's, it's in the locker. locker. You can turn on the music. I recommend jog jams. So we turned on some fun music and we even had like a disco ball light that my kids have. And we turned we turned that on and just made it like like a big arena event. So that was a lot of fun. Game number three is a good old fashioned Nerf gun battle. Doesn't every family do this? I don't know, maybe you don't, maybe you do. Uh, again, with our boys, um, they love Nerf guns. We have a stack. If you don't have a stack, get, get just a couple cheap ones. They're like six, seven bucks and they come with darts. And it's fun when everybody in the family or everybody involved at least has their own gun. I do recommend protective eyewear if needed and just clear boundaries with that. So we say no face shots. Again, this is similar to the dodgeball. We draw a line in the middle, or you can just have, if you've got the room in your house, let the kids just run around and, and have at it at each other. <laughs> Again, this is a fun one to get mom and dad involved with. Um, so I say just like, let go of your inhibitions, 
just be a kid again and the kids will love it. Um, Cause if they do it by themselves, yeah, they'll play it. But when the parents get involved, they'll go a little bit longer. Um, it really, really inspires them. So that's just a little tip there for you. Number four is ball tag. And my kids said they invented this game. Uh, but we were playing one day and, or they were playing one day and they wanted to play tag, but they had a ball. It was like a soft, squishy ball. <laughs> and you just chase each other around the house and toss it and hit people. And whoever gets hit by the balls becomes it. So super simple, gets them moving around, keeps them busy for a little bit. Uh, just make sure you're doing it in a safe area. It depends on how big your house is, I know. But if you've got the space, or even just running down the hall, up and down the hall, in and out of rooms, it's okay. <laughs> Number five is another good old fashioned activity, which I don't know if other moms are gonna mention this, they probably will. And there's probably a guarantee that your kids have already tried this, but it is a fort. Let the kids build a fort. I know for moms, this is like, you don't want them to do it because it just makes a big mess. But let me tell you, it's only temporary. They can always clean it up. You can make them clean it up. Um, but let them have it for, for a while. One day is enough or a couple days. Even you can let it stay up. This can be done in their bedrooms over their beds. If you got someone with a bunk bed, you can tuck blankets in the top bunk and have them play underneath. Uh, they can use the old uh, the old fashioned couch cushions um, or there's even big fancy sets you can get that you can put them together and build a fort. Uh, but kids love this usually and uh, it's not as active I guess but it's still just something to keep their minds and their hands busy and let me tell you it, it keeps mine busy for a while. They like that one. Let go of being worried about having a messy house and just let them do it. Just set a deadline for when it's coming down and explain that to them right away. And then when that deadline comes, everybody pitches in and cleans it up. And it really does not take that long to clean up. It just, it doesn't. And game number six is indoor volleyball is what I call it, or indoor ping pong if you don't have enough space for a volleyball game. Usually your living room is enough space. So again, you set off a boundary marker somewhere in the middle and you can do this with balloons. So go to the dollar store, grab a bag of balloons and you pass it, you can hit it back and forth. Uh, you can upgrade the ball if you want to, depends on your space and uh, a little bit heavier than a balloon, but not so heavy than like an outdoor ball. If you know what I'm talking about, if you have one of those and just tap it back and forth, try to see nobody touches the ground or you can bounce it off maybe a wall if you've got one that's available. Just, just have fun, have the kids have fun and hit it back and forth. Or you can grab some ping pong balls and paper plates and clear off your dining room table and hit it back and forth. <laughs> or a coffee table if you've got one that's big enough. Uh, and I, know, I guarantee the kids will really enjoy that one. Again, it depends on your space, but we have to really like, as moms, we just have to let go of our idea of how the space is used sometimes. So again, if you have things that are breakable and stuff, just remember those are off limits, move them out of the room for the time if you have to. Um, but kids really need space to be able to just be kids. And those are the kind of memories that you can make with your kids that they're gonna remember for a long, long time. So they're not gonna remember, oh, mom kept the living room super clean. Good for her, you know, like, I don't know. I think sometimes as moms, we need to just let down our guard play with the kids or let them be kids and be okay with a little bit of rambunctiousness and and it'll be okay. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my videos, I have nine things that homeschool moms stress about but shouldn't. Or if you're working on training your kids and keeping the house clean, speaking of keeping clean and chores, um, I have my habit training series as well that you can check out. Make sure you subscribe to see my video coming up soon where I'm going to share some quiet afternoon activities for the crafty kiddos. Things that they can do during read aloud or just on a quiet afternoon where you need them to sit and be still. So that is coming soon. All right. Thanks so much, guys. I'm so glad you're here and you rock at homeschooling. Go find your joy in the noise and I'll see you soon. Yes, I was a cheerleader for a year. Shout out to my friend Cherie and Naomi. Um, anyway, 